on May 14, 2014, at the Conference of the National Committee on the Public Service held in Abuja, the chairman of the then Nigerian Civil Service Commission, Joan Ayo, blamed the Moritala Muhammad 1975 purge of the top echelon of the service for introducing graft, dishonesty, and undermining of accountability in government business. She said, the Moritala Obasanjo Jonta, desirous of being dictatorial and unaccountable, sacked trained and cultured civil servants, threw away merits, evicted civil servants into bleak future, and brought in the culture of self-preservation. At the same conference, Professor Yusuf Turaki, one of the delegates, blamed the 1976 Dasuki local government reform for the massive theft at that level. He stated that by making local governments part of Nigeria's federating units, giving them unearned money from the federation accounts, which they saw as nobody's money. Accountability took flight and was replaced with merely sharing money, which goes on today between the states and local governments. But can this be responsible for Nigeria's current and pervasive culture of near absence of integrity in running government business? When they are talking about the oil production, oh, we are losing oil. Yes, people are stealing oil through bunkery. But the major oil thefts are the ones going through the back door to global destination by the cabal. I traveled to U.S. for more than four times to investigate undeclared crude oil that left this country. It's my boggling. It may appear sweeping to state that Nigeria at 62 is a nation run on a culture of graft and looting of national treasury, resources, and opportunity. The Nigerian government admits that it has lost grip of the looting of the nation's oil resources. The crude oil theft in Nigeria is a call to global vultures for free scavenging. It's been very difficult for us to get information out of the branches of the Nigerian government uh, on payments so that we could try to match the payments up to the deliveries and the shipments that came into the United States. Uh, if we want to move forward and we want to get results, we need to start in the United States because we can get the information from the buyers of the oil that we need to trace it back to the sellers of the oil and we can follow the money from the sellers to the big banks in New York who then wired the money to Nigeria. We can find out who they were dealing with and where the money went. But what does anyone say about so many governors who are on the watch list of the EFCC? What does anyone say about so many legislatures who abuse their constituency projects to enrich themselves and their families? What does anyone say about security organizations that undermine their own operations to enrich their officers? What does anyone say of cleric that flees the congregation to make the list of Forbes men of means? Understandably, living on the fast lane has become an aspiration of the youths. They want to get there anyhow because political leadership has given them a cue or told them their corruption has no consequence. The craze for wealth, uh, quick money and ritual killing is a, is a taboo. Hey. <laughs> eh? hey. Eh? So you want to tell us that uh, only two people you don't join and go kidnap? Yes, sir. Nigeria faces the gripping challenge of armed robbery. Recently, the Abia State Police arrested 10 members of Bullion Van Attacking Robbery Gang. The makeup was a mini national robbery gang. From Oshun, Delta, Abia to Ogun States, the gang, which included an SDSS operative, robbed to get rich quick. From Wadume, the Taraba kidnapped Kingpin 
to advance and his accomplices who are now in prison. The driving desire is to be on the fast lane. But is there a difference between these violent criminals, including the many in the forests, who get huge sums as ransom, and the politician who has stolen the hope which Nigeria's independence raised for many. Who or what is the cause of this new culture? Things really turned back for Nigeria from 1981 that uh, General uh, Buhari did a coup against Shagari. And all through down the line, we struggled to fix things, but they keep going back because a lot of the bad people who seem to enjoy the wealth, easy wealth, are there. You should look and see where is your grandparents and grand-grandparents. Where are the prophets? Where are the kings and queens? Where are the most rich people who lived in this world? They, are, they, are, they have all gone. So also you are going. Some political watchers say the entry into Nigerian politics of the tribe of 419ers and their culture of the end justifies the means has brought Nigeria to its present past. Having taken over the commanding heights of Nigerian politics, they have planted the culture of this honest dealing, which is running the nation, aground. What we are reaping today is not just what happened in the last eight years, it's what has happened in the last 40 years. And so we are dealing with, we, we are dealing with the consequences of our action. So if we want to really go back uh, to solving this issue, we should go back to back to the integrity of the human person, the value of labor, hard work, and anybody who is working should be able to get just wage for his earning and to be able to take care of his family. We need to change our orientation from the beginning, from the house, up to the immediate community, to, to the larger society. We need totally, total orientation in our society. As social psychologists raising Nigeria's present predicament, some citizens wonder what will come of Nigeria's development if the culture of graft both in public and private space is not tamed. It may yet be morning to stitch in time to save nine. In Abuja, marvelous a bomb man for signature show.